So in this video, I want to talk about Miss Wanting. It's a concept I learned when I took the Yale online course, The Science of Wellbeing. It's a free course, and so I'll leave the link below if you want to check it out. But in this video, I'm just going to talk about Miss Wanting and a couple of the studies that I saw in this course and how it relates to this whole gender affirming surgery thing. So Miss Wanting, well, first wanting, the word wanting is a prediction that what you're wanting will be making you happier or more content in some way. So you could be hungry, so you have a need, and you might say, I want a donut because you want the sugar and you think that by eating a donut it's going to fill you up. Where it's going to give you energy, it's going to fill you up, you think you, you want this thing. And then you have a donut and then maybe you get an energy crash really quickly after because there's just so much sugar in it. Um, or the dough in it, you know, it's, it's full of carbs, right? And it's going to make you continue to be fat, right? And so at the end of it, after you've eaten it, after you've got the results, you could say, actually, I really did not want that donut. It didn't actually make me feel better by having that donut. So miswanting is that sort of prediction that this thing is going to make me happier or more content or healthier or whatever and then you find out that it doesn't so it's just a failed prediction that something's going to be beneficial for you and so there's actually a lot of people out there who are feeling let's say lonely they feel like they don't have a connection with somebody and they want to get married so that they can have that connection uh, there could be many other reasons why people want to get married, but for some reason they have a need, a desire, they feel like there's a hole inside of them that they need to fill and that this marriage is going to fulfill that for them. And so there was a study that was done about the uh, happiness. Let's uh, look at that honeymoon effect. So this is actually called life satisfaction. They don't call it happiness because happiness is hard to quantify, but they do these studies and this is a study in life satisfaction. And so there was the study that there was, um, they were taking the life satisfaction before and during the engagement period and around the, the, around the marriage and then around the honeymoon and then after the honeymoon. And what you see is that the life satisfaction for people, this is like averages, right? Average life satisfaction. It starts out around 7.35 or so not quite 7.4 and then it goes up with the engagement the getting ready for marriage and then it goes up with the marriage the actual marriage this is where the marriage happens at uh, zero the point and then after the marriage it goes down and down until it hits that same life satisfaction the baseline satisfaction that it was before the marriage and so my theory as to what is causing this is this and in life, we're going through life normally, right? We're dealing with the present normally. When you get engaged, you start thinking about, or maybe even when you're just starting to date somebody, you start thinking about all the things that you could do in the future. So you start thinking about the future in a very optimistic way. So when you're talking with somebody about wedding plans, you know, maybe he's gonna propose, whatever, um, then getting the engagement ring and then going through the the parties. You've got lots of family events. Um, you're planning for what a uh, bachelorette party, bachelor party. You're planning for the actual wedding and the rehearsal dinners. And there's just the honeymoon and you're, pre you're preparing in a very optimistic way about, oh my God, this is going to be awesome. I love this. This is going to be great. Um, I can't wait for this to happen. And then we're going to start our marriage and everybody's happy very optimistic about the future. You're very future oriented in a very optimistic way. And then the marriage happens and then the honeymoon and then you go back home and now you're very stuck in the present. You're not planning for what's going to happen in the future. You're very focused on what is happening in the present. And it brings you back to reality. And it's not so much that optimistic, you know, rose colored glasses, like this is going to be great. You're now just stuck in the middle of it and you have to deal with what's happening right here and now. And so that is where your satisfaction starts going down again. 
uh, because you can get caught up in this optimistic, you know, looking towards the future. I don't think there's anything wrong with being optimistic and looking towards the future. I think that's actually probably the state we should be in a lot, uh, a lot more. Um, but we don't. We get stuck in the average everyday life. And I think that these people who they didn't have any coping skills to deal with. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that these people are not satisfied with their life. In this example, they're actually going back to the baseline satisfaction, which it could have been great beforehand. It could have been awful beforehand. We don't know. Um, but it's, it's actually looking pretty good on here. But um, for some people, you know, they can have this same bump. However, they could have started out very low. And so I wanted to talk about how this is related to the gender affirmation surgery stuff and why I think that is probably actually very detrimental to the children. Now, a lot of times we have different definitions of words. Um, something I find very interesting right now is that people are saying, you know, I want what's best for the children on, let's say, the right and the left side. Um, but they have completely different opposite beliefs about what is best for the children. So uh, some people want what's best for the children. They believe that that would be to not be indoctrinated into this belief about gender ideology and to be allowed to be whoever they are and not told that they need to have surgery to change who they are to be their authentic self. And the other side think it's really best for them to be able to change their body in surgery and pills and things like that um, because they want them, their children to be their authentic self. And they both have different views about what is an authentic self. And so they're competing. They both want what's best for the children, but they have completely different views about what's best for the children. Um, so it, it, that happens a lot in things that we're discussing today, um, topics. It's crazy. Like everybody wants what's best for the nation. And a lot of people think that means don't force masks on people. And the other group thinks you should force masks on people, right? So we've had this really big divide in what is best, what is good. Um, people don't really have the same description of what is good for people, what is beneficial for people. Some people think what's beneficial for people is freedom, and some people think that what's best for people is, um, what, slavery, I guess? Um, slavery to what the state says, mandates, things like that. Um, so we have different views about what's best, but I think that life satisfaction is a pretty good thing to focus on. We want a high life satisfaction. And I'm saying that what people think their life satisfaction is going to go up when they get this gender affirming, quote unquote, affirming uh, surgery is that their life satisfaction might go up in the planning and getting the surgery. And then afterwards, it's going to go down again. And I think it's even worse than just going back to baseline. And the reason is from this other picture, which I'm going to show on the screen. So this is a study about cosmetic surgery. And on the left, you can see before surgery. On the right, you can see after surgery. But they've got two different colors here. The light gray is people who ended up having cosmetic surgery. And the dark color is those who did not have cosmetic surgery. Now, this is not about gender affirming surgery. This was done in 2011. This is like probably liposuctions or breast augmentations and things like that. Um, and so here they're showing like, how do I feel on a physical appearance scale? Obviously, it is a negative belief because these are people who want to have surgery. But you'll see here after the surgery, the people who felt bad about their physical appearance are actually the people who had cosmetic surgery. They feel worse than they did before because you can see this is going down. So people who have cosmetic surgery tend to feel worse after they have cosmetic surgery. And it's because they think this is actually going to help them, but it's not actually going to help them um, to feel better because feeling better is not about changing your externals. It's about changing your internal view, your internal mind and viewpoint and beliefs. So people are trying to Rather than change their internal beliefs, they're trying to change the external world, which is their physical body, and that's not actually helpful. So looking at the other things here, there's suicidal ideation. That's the belief that maybe I should commit suicide, right? Um, 
And you'll see that after having no surgery, for the people who didn't have cosmetic surgery, this dark bar, it goes down a little bit, so there's a little bit more suicidal ideation. Oh, actually, I should say a little less uh, suicidal ideation um, because it's going negative. And after having the cosmetic surgery, the suicidal ideation actually goes up for the people who had the cosmetic surgery. And alcohol use, again, the alcohol use goes up after people have cosmetic surgery. And conduct problems, it doesn't really change that much. You can see it maybe goes up a little bit. But people end up becoming more suicidal after they have cosmetic surgery. They feel less about themselves physically after they have cosmetic surgery. And so my belief is that people are going to, with this gender-affirming surgery stuff, they're going along on a baseline which is not very good. They don't feel really well. And what they should be doing is changing their perspective, their mind, I would say through things like CBT, changing their beliefs about things. However, what's going on is people are just going to say, no, we need to affirm your belief, which is actually a negative thought process. So we're going to affirm your negative thought process that you were born in the wrong body or, you know, you should hate your body and now you need to change your body. Um, so they're affirming these negative thought processes and telling people, but when you get this thing, this thing that now you are quote unquote wanting because you feel like there's a hole inside and now you want this gender affirmation surgery or prescription drugs, etc. What they're saying is that when you get this thing, you're going to be happier. But what happens is that it's miswanting that thing. It's when you get that thing, you're going through the whole plans of getting a surgery. Now we've got these, um, there's new gender reveal parties for children who are saying that they are the different uh, gender than their biological sex now. So there's these parties, there's a lot of um, celebration and attention that is given to these people as they are transitioning with the different pronouns and things like that. Everybody is throwing a lot of attention and positive, um, you know, gifts and all this other stuff. And there's like getting on TV for some people, um, getting special rewards. Be maybe you get to not do something that the rest of the class has to do because something else, you know, there's the, it, there's a whole being treated differently. Like you've been uplifted and then there's the surgery and they go forward and do the surgery. And then they think like, wow, this is great. We're finally doing it. Um, and then after the surgery, now you go home and now you have to deal with all the aftermath of the surgery, which cosmetic surgery really hurts, right? There's a lot of pain involved and there's a lot of pain involved specifically in these things with the gender affirmation surgery, because it's a very sensitive parts, you know, we call them sensitive parts. Um, so these are, it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of pain that they're going to have to deal with. And, and I don't know that they're able to overcome like, we are at a point where some of the surgeries that they're doing, they can't really undo. And and a lot of doctors are kind of baffled and people are getting, the detransitioners are getting gaslighted. And um, it's really, it's a difficult situation. I think it's going to be even worse, especially with the gaslighting because detransitioners are told, well, maybe you weren't trans to begin with. You know, because people don't want to actually believe that people could have been sort of uh, brainwashed or pushed into this belief system through the whole affirmation, uplifting, you know, phenomenon that we have right now in our society. Um, so I'm a little concerned that this is what's going to happen is that they're going to come down after the surgery. I mean, we've already seen that with all the detransitioners, right? And that it's going to be even worse because of the plastic surgery graph here where it says that they're going to feel worse about their physical appearance now that they've changed the physical appearance through surgery and suicidal ideation goes up. So this is my understanding of what is going to happen with people who go through affirmation, affirmation surgery. 
or even just taking the drugs, which can cause you to become like infertile or never be able to achieve an orgasm in the future when they finally become adults and want to do something. Um, the other thing is there's going to be a huge amount of people who are not going to be interested in somebody who's gone through this process. Um, so they're going to feel even more lonely, likely. Um, it's, it's, I think, I think people who are pushing this gender affirmation surgery and products, the drugs and things like that are not actually thinking it through. I think they're using science that sort of, um, I, I would say it's not really science. It's something that is trying to prove their belief. Um, when people do studies, it's often that they have a belief that they want to get out of it. And then the way they do the study ends up making it seem as if what their belief was true because that's what they thought when they started it and a law of attraction sort of says you get what you think um, and so I think people are really blinded by their I don't know de desire their strong desire thinking this is it um, rather than an understanding that maybe there could be a different way that would work better I don't think they want to hear that there could be a different way that would work better. I think changing what would work better would be talking with somebody and asking them, you know, why do you want to go through this? Why do you care what other people are thinking about yourself? Because it, we really should not be minding what other people think about ourselves. Um, and to be your authentic self is to just be who you are and not change yourself for other people. And yet it feels like people are changing themselves for other people. They're trying to get this attention. I think that there's a lot of hype that is driving this desire, this want that is actually miswanting. Um, and so to change that, they would have to work on becoming comfortable with who they are authentically before doing the surgery and or taking the drugs. And I don't feel like children are actually capable of saying what they need in these instances. I feel like the parents are pushing people, um, pushing their children through this Munchausen's by proxy um, effect into this. And so, I mean, Disaffected Podcast talks about that all the time. If you want to go see that, um, you know, check that out. But basically, we're not treating the actual cause and this is just sort of like a band-aid and that's why it's not going to work um, you need to treat the cause of what is causing them to feel out of place when i was a child i didn't like wearing dresses i wasn't into babies i didn't play with dolls i played with legos i was not into all the things that the girls my age were into and so i I never felt like a boy trapped in a girl's body, right? These are just stereotypes that girls like babies and girls like dresses. I, I don't really know that how many girls like dresses, honestly. Um, some may, but I don't know that that has anything to do, like, I, I don't know what that's about. Um, but I didn't really know too many girls who actually liked wearing dresses. And so that didn't feel to me like something that was a girl thing. I mean, I guess I don't really see guys wearing dresses much except on TV. <laughs> um, but I think what we're dealing with gender is a lot of personality and stereotypes and people are putting themselves into boxes rather than becoming authentic. And it's like, how can I say this? Some children are saying, you know, I like pink, I like dresses, I like frilly things, I like sparkles and bracelets and whatnot. Let's say that's a little boy. And so people say because of the stereotypes that these are things that girls like, you must be a girl, right? They're putting them into a box saying this is the girl box. And because this is stuff that girls like, then you're stuck in this box rather than you can be a boy who likes sparkly things. You know, we, and, and by the way, pink, never used to be for girls. I mean, that's just a social construct, right? It's um, blue and pink, those colors. It's like a social construct that was put out there to get people to, to buy things. Um, 
it, it never used to be that way, so you can look up the origins of that if you want. But it's, it's these stereotypes, like because you like a certain color that you must be a girl or a boy, we shouldn't be putting people like into these boxes and just be your authentic self, which you can do weird things like wear different clothes and like different things, but that doesn't mean that you are something other than what you are biologically. So people should, I hope, um, be able to be comfortable with their authentic selves. And rather than trying to change it physically, uh, people we need to become comfortable inside with themselves, you know, have a little self love and understanding and not worry so much about what other people think. Um, or do or say and don't be so caught up in getting people's approval. A lot of the times things that people approve of are not actually beneficial for you. So that's not something to chase after. That would be something that you're miswanting their approval um, because it's not going to work out for you. So I think that's about it for this video. Please leave any comments below. I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're on any of the following platforms, consider subscribing to my content there also. My videos are available on Gab TV, Rumble, Odyssey, and YouTube. You can also join my Law of Attraction life coaching groups on Telegram, MeWe, Gab, and Minds. And I've now added a locals group where you can support me to get exclusive content. I'm also on Twitter and Getter. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and consider sharing the video with friends or family. Have a great day.